Hi all, I have another very interesting game to show you of Leela from the TSEC Season 14 Premier Division. So this is against the mighty and Shax. So that's a combination of and Andorra and Shax as in chess. So uh, let's see, D4 from Leela and the opening book given is quite a positional opening. We have a classic Queen's Gambit declined. This is the orthodox defense so knight f3 castles seven rook c1 we have now c6 a3 a6 this is the end of the book leela takes on d5 e takes bishop d3 black plays knight e4 this invites simplification where bishop takes e7 which doesn't promise white too much black should be fairly stable there we have instead the more ambitious bishop f4 keeping some tension in the position and actually causing some concession here in a way causing some double-edgedness to occur black plays the violent g5 now generally speaking these kind of moves unless you really know what you're doing with the follow-ups they're not to be recommended moving pawns around your king creating weaknesses sometimes there are, there are specific issues in the position here after bishop g3 it, it depends how important those issues are uh, we have f5 reinforces the knight but also this bishop uh, is a slight issue sometimes uh, if white plays h3 now the knight takes g3 uh, and that's pretty unpleasant structurally so is this justified by black if black had played knight takes g3 of course this opens up the rook for free of charge and this is this is just a total disaster for black if, if black loses that h7 pawn so f5 is really a good follow-up so far queen c2 we have bishop f6 knight d2 if white routinely castles it loses that opportunity to activate the rook for free and maybe black just plays h5 with ideas like h4 so this bishop is a kind of issue if knight d2 h4 it turns out here though this should be uh okay with bishop d6 in this particular uh sequence that should be okay uh and if we look at this again with uh, h3 it turns out white actually might be doing okay in this line with a peace sack this is because there's this a certain airiness around black's king so this variation illustrates that could be sometimes exploitable white with a small edge technically so um it is a bit scary for black so knight d2 we have bishop g7 again knight takes g3 is pretty unpalatable not just f5 but h7 become targets if we look at this for a moment so f5 a target and just taking on f5 is fine so um knight d2 bishop g7 we have knight e2 so this is a little bit interesting moving this knight to e2 rookie eight so supporting the g3 bishop now means h4 is much more effective without any structural damage impact or knight takes we can play knight takes g3 so Lula's actually punctured a hole into f4 and that's a very interesting aspect of this game actually to create wholesome <laughs> concessions <laughs> we'll see later uh some other wholesome concessions uh but f4 is is now in white's hands and we're going to have potentially a case of a locked in bishop yet again uh, sometimes with these pawns on light squares black has to be careful about the pawns on light squares here and the c8 bishop clearly bishop f4 knight df6 h5 and now there's a potential idea of a, of a form pawn uh, with h6 black plays knight takes d2 now what would you play here if i give you five seconds to pause the video okay i hope you've gone for the form pawn and get the form pawn t-shirt for my teespring store because form pawns are really really handy leela played for the form pawn instead of the immediate recapture hitting the bishop 
it is quite interesting in its own right uh, this position so what does black do black actually retreated the bishop if knight d e4 taking on g7 black's king is compromised there's a dark square bishop without a counterpart part here and variations like this serve to show black's crumbling with especially things like bishop e5 coming up the bishop without a counterpart is devastating quite often uh so on knight take on knight f3 as a try uh, as a sort of desperado try this really doesn't help rook g1 is powerful here and bishop e5 so it seems this intermediary h6 getting the form pawn getting that t-shirt is the best way to go bishop h8 king takes d4 d2 not d4 that would be adventurous uh, knight e4 check king e1 we have bishop f6 so look that so far has compromised black on the dark squares the bishop is still hemmed in there's a form pawn installed so there's various good news items being collected here rook h5 queen e7 f3 putting some pressure on this diagonal uh, asking this knight to politely move but actually after queen f7 hitting the rook uh, black has an interesting idea here a very interesting idea if the knight did go back then f takes g4 peeling open lines say king d2 and actually here uh, this is very very strong for bishop takes d6 in this position uh, and bishop takes h7 white has got a big advantage there uh, you might consider if we have a look at this again uh, that queen takes e3 check is dangerous it turns out it's not actually that dangerous for example like this rook e5 shields e2 and White's in control here. Black hasn't got enough. So uh yeah, but black has an interesting idea. First with attacking the rook. And the interesting idea is just leave the knight on e4 because it traps the light square bishop of white. So is there any advantage of taking on e4 here? Leader thinks there is, because after f takes f takes another good news item, what would you play here? to get another bit of good news for your position this did open up the bishop so in a way that's good news for black but something bad about this temporary uh, peace sack there is something bad about this temporary peace sack what would you play five seconds might play okay bishop c4 just incurring maximum structural damage and fragmentation of black's pawn structure if bishop takes e4 black plays queen takes and gets a good grip on the e4 square what well, has a small edge but it's nothing really to write home about and there's some tactical ideas you know knight g3 rook takes f4 and bishop takes d4 check there's some tactical ideas to be aware of here otherwise knight g3 looks really tempting okay so um we have actually so bishop c4 d takes so some structural damage so counting pawns one two three four five six one two three four five six uh so offering the exchange of queens here queen d7 that's re uh rejects the bishop g3 rook f8 bishop h4 trying to soften black up a bit further on the dark squares getting rid of the dark square defender and black doesn't want to put the bishop on h8 here and so just plays bishop d5 Bishop takes h4 is no big deal. Uh, this is just very pleasant for white. And there's look at that pressure on d5 here. This illustrates a, a big advantage for white. So uh, Bishop d5 leader takes that dark square defender and has a nice juicy knight now on f4 compared to the bishop. And in a way, Leela starts putting a lot of her pieces and pawns on dark squares funny enough uh, apart from the rook in fact every single piece and pawn is on a dark square away from this bishop <laughs> this bishop is being tricked into not seeing any any targets basically uh, we have queen d8 king d2 the king makes a walk by the way in one thing you might have considered is the king using g3 for endings 
<clears throat> it's a bit too ambitious to play King F2. <clears throat> Pardon me. G3 check. But it turns out even here, King E1 is okay. If white plays like this, it's still okay for white. Nothing's really changed. If white it gets really suicidal with taking the pawn. Yes, there is a big storm off the check. Queen G4 crashing through like this, opening up the bishop sometimes, winning lots of pawns. It's nasty. No, there's no there's no way Leela's gonna allow all this counterplay. So G3, okay, the king hasn't got G3 to play with. But the king ha might have other ambitions later for puncturing through uh black in the end games. Entry points. Yes, that is a consideration. Entry points into the black position is a consideration for the king later. Because if we can observe the dark squares have been weakened, the king needs to walk on dark squares later. So being aware of entry points into the black position uh, is is very important here. Like over here, maybe you know entry points via b6. Okay, we have king d2, b6, queen c3, queen d6, queen b4, black plays bishop f7. If taking the queen off, this turns out okay uh, for white, even with this because there's rook c2, white's okay there, big advantage. So bishop f7, queen c3, leader's not interested in taking the queen there. In fact, interestingly, after king c2, king b1, tucking the king in bed, we have the move b5 now. And you might think, why b5? Because doesn't that concede the c5 square? It turns out here, as an example, if b5 isn't played, Rook h5 putting pressure on d5. And now this kind of thing with queen b3 is annoying. For example, the form pawn here is crushing. Rook takes d5 and there's a mating idea on the back row. So it can, the combination of the form pawn and the d5 target is pretty unpleasant for black. So that might have had something to do with this slight concession, trying to maybe take away b3 from the white queen. Now that is a middle game concern, clashing with some end game concerns though, as a trade-off. Because if a4 is played, the trade-off is the king walk on dark squares later. Imagine this king going on dark squares. So this is a, a middle game uh, end game trade off scenario if a4 is actually played. We have queen c2, bishop f7. So a4 is being resisted here for the moment. Rook h4, rook g8. Queen c5, bishop c4. Now queen b6 tickling the a pawn to move to a4. Remember middle game end game trade off though. If a4 was played, there's an entry point into black's position via the dark squares for a king walk. This is a really serious consideration. Queen b6. It's ultra subtle. If white had just played queen takes d6, uh, there is a small edge for white here. If, if black's playing a4 voluntarily especially, um, there are other issues in the position that maybe king c2 and b3, so m maybe it will be prompted anyway. Uh, so th this would be pleasant for white as well with a small edge. So is a4 going to be played anyway? Does it, does it need this queen tickling? Okay, we'll see what happened now. Queen b6. The, the a pawn is tickled into a4. If rook a8, there's rook takes g4. Uh, let's put that on the board. So rook a8, rook takes g4. On c5, hitting the queen, we just take on c5 of the queen. And rook d1, take that d file, big advantage. So a4, concession. Rook h5, the rook goes to f8, rook g f8, rook c to h1. The rook goes to c5, targeting that backward pawn. Now queen a5, <laughs> queen d6, queen a7, a little bit of, it seems almost pointless dancing around, but it, there are actually some big critical tests, some threats going on, and potentially bonus concessions being created from this queen dancing stuff. Uh, so queen b6, because this is a bit mysterious to everyone watching this game. What What is going on here with this queen? Uh, so queen b7. 
Well, there is a threat of checkmate <laughs> to be observed with the fourth pawn. And now there is a threat to be observed. Queen takes g4. That blocks. And now there is a threat to be observed of queen e5 to g5. We have uh, queen d6. As an example, why does that have to be taken seriously? Queen e5. Uh, if rook f8, queen e5, the point is queen g5 here is nasty because the rook can't use g6. And white's now threatening checkmate again. And here, actually, there's a nasty knight h5 with idea queen g7. So queen e7 to parry that. If rook b8, just to put that on the board, queen g7 is checkmate. Yeah, this this is I know this is just incredible, but it does seem as though the queen dancing has quite a lot of venom going on to it. It's not just random queen dancing. It's not just to wind everyone up watching the game. There is ideas queen e5 g5 knight h5 around the form pawn. So it's like yeah, the goal hanger is there. The ball the ball is trying to be passed to it from the queen, which is on the other side of the board at the moment, has to cross through the center to get the g5. To pass the ball to the goal hanger. So Queen D6 stopping the use of Queen E5. Queen B6, more dancing. <laughs> but putting pressure on C6 now. So black dare not like take on H6. Black played rook f8. Uh, we have Queen B7. Uh, as as an alternative to Queen B7, you know, this is also actually quite decent to do this I mean there, there are various ways to play this position for example this this continuation shows why it's got infiltration possibilities and coming coming around the king side but Queen B7 and now Queen C8 hitting G4 again Queen D7 Queen B8 Queen D6 and it looks as though I've just gone round in circles but now <laughs> I know endless circles, but uh, I'm hoping I haven't repeated a whole series of moves. We have this position where the queen is actually taken now on d6. Rook takes d6. Okay, so what did all that dancing do? Well, as I mentioned, there's an entry point on a5 here for a king walk. Uh, so this could be important. Rook h4, rook f f6, taking on g4, swapping g4 for h6 with rook h4 now so a, a pair of rooks come off if uh, rook here to avoid that rook e5 hits e4 uh, and that's not the knight's controlling e6 usefully so there's nothing to help e4 here dropping off so rook h4 some simplification now this stops king c2 immediately for any king walk the king goes to c1 rook h5 rook f5 h5 rook e5 rook takes e4 yes this this e pawn has been a liability and now you know it's it's officially taken off so officially now Lila is a pawn up at the moment check rook d7 so a pawn up yep and the king is starting to walk King G5, we, but not to A5 now, just to the center after that pawn's been taken. As if to say, look, your pawn used to be there. My king's on that position now. <laughs> king G4, uh, Rook C7. The problem with black's king walking is that if white has passed pawns, the king's on the wrong side to stop them advancing. That's one issue with the black king walking down the board. We have check, King D6. So C6 is a major target. Bishop D5. Now we have actually rook h7 trying to take out the h6 pawn before taking on d5. So creating an outside h pawn. Remember the king's on this side of the board now. It's going to be difficult uh, to stop these pass pawns sometimes. Knight takes, rook takes, letting e3 drop. You might think, what is Leela doing? Letting e3 drop. King d3. And now king takes b5. Letting even d4 drop here. And you might think, well, isn't this getting close to a theoretical drawn rook and pawn ending? Aren't all rook and pawn endings drawn? It turns out here, well, black played rook f2. If black plays king takes d4, 
this position looks as though hang on it's only two pawns and black's got that center pawn the thing is here for example just to show uh it is actually pretty hopeless because the rook can get behind at the last moment to swap for h7 then we have two connected pass pawns which are absolutely winning so not all rook and pawn endings are drawn that's a, a saying from tarash i believe rook f2 so rook a6 letting b2 drop you might think this is outrageous king c5 rook h2 rook takes a4 and letting even h5 drop to just be one pawn up um that isn't played though we have actually king e4 and again letting h5 drop but that's ignored rook c2 check is played you might think this is a chance just to be one pawn down isn't that drawing rook takes h5 why isn't this played it turns out here this is absolutely winning with a4 the king is just on the wrong side here for example like this the the rook is marvelous in this position it can go into the tarish position to support the rook behind the pawn the tarish rule that rook should be behind pawns whilst defending d4 until the last moment and then we have this position where rook a5 king c5 king b6 rook a4 and now here optimal with the king on b6 king b7 winning for example like this and it's a race easily won by white as an example so it turns out here that taking on h5 is pointless it's losing uh just to show that again instead of rook h6 say rook h8 we have much the same thing happening where uh, the rook goes to a very nice a4 mathematically speaking to support the pass pawn protect d4 almost like mathematical uh, elegance but yeah this is absolutely winning so uh, so rook c2 check was played instead of taking h5 king b5 and the a pawns pushed and yes this is absolutely winning for white the game actually adjudicated here white has a choice of which pawn to win with both are actually leading to the same kind of winning end game this one queens with check uh so we can look at both a5 queening the idea of queening with check so this the game ended here just to clarify both engines thought it was absolutely winning for white so a5 a6 we check we're two pawns if taking here we're only one pawn up the snag is queen d5 check <laughs> is is getting the queens off if here then that just wins the queen otherwise there's queen c5 take the queen and that's queening so one pawn is fine there and in this variation uh if king e3 queen d5 is a big advantage for white this is just it's a win it's a win and the same scenario if we moved uh, the h6 pawn instead it doesn't matter about the pawn not queening with check we have much the same kind of scenario it's an absolutely winning end game for white here the pawns are just too strong the king's on the wrong side of the pawns okay so there's a few interesting lessons themes and stuff going on in this game uh black was tickled into provoked into playing g5 perhaps so white didn't simplify with bishop takes e7 so there's lasting dark square weaknesses that are eventually created by leela especially like f4 and later a form pawn was installed instead of an automatic recapture so the subtleties of recapturing to get another small advantage bit of news the, the form pawn installed the, the weak dark squares then there was a strong knight versus bishop and then the queen dancing created not only threats but actually some permanent concessions like the a4 move which meant that king's walk king walks in the end game were good it turns out black was losing e4 anyway by force so the king didn't have to go up to a5 it went via e4 and the end game transitions for the rook and pawn endings all of them seem to be winning after that so a pretty instructive positional game from leela uh i hope you enjoyed it if you enjoyed this game video then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly become a member at chessbowl.net play against other youtubers 
You can also challenge me for a game. Also check out channel memberships. You can get a free full month at Chess Mold. If you become an actual member of this channel, that'd be really great. See that on Chess Mold as well, play you. Uh, you can check the YouTube analysis and advance of these games from the improved menu you learn from the Masters YouTube order button. Comments, questions, relations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Appreciate it. And new Teespring store in the description. Check it out. Thanks very much.